What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we have some very unfortunate news when it regards the highly anticipated, lightweight, undisputed showdown between newly crowned unified lightweight world champion Australian star boxer George Cambosis Jr., who has 20 wins, no losses, no draws, 10 wins by way of knockout. He is 28 years of age, 5 foot 8, with a 70 inch arm reach. With that said, we would love to see George Cambosis Jr. take on undefeated WBC lightweight world champion superstar boxer Devin the Dream Haney, who is 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 15 wins by way of knockout. He is 23 years of age, 5 foot 8, with a 72 inch arm reach. So, with that said, uh, history could be made if they come together. But the two sides just can't seem to come together. As it seems like, George Cambosis Jr. and his team and his promoter, Lou DeBella, have, don't have much interest in negotiating the fight for Devin Haney. Well, at least Lou DeBella doesn't. Because as soon as George Cambosis Jr. won the title... Lou DeBella immediately let the world know that he didn't think highly of Devin Haney when he stated that Devin Haney was an email champion. He wasn't an official champion. So with that said, Lou DeBella, he then went on to say that they have other objectives and other fighters that they are focused on, not Devin Haney. But George Cambosis Jr. himself, he had came out before the fight, before he shocked the world, defeating former unified lightweight world champion superstar boxer Tiafimo Lopez, November 27th, New York, New York, and Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world, that he came out and he, you know, uh, added Devin Haney, and he told Devin Haney on social media, don't worry about the going back and forth with Tiafimo Lopez, because if you remember, Devin Haney and Tiafimo Lopez, they went viral when they came face-to-face when Devin Haney was calling out Tiafimo Lopez to become undisputed, and Tiafimo Lopez wasn't willing to oblige him. But when they came face to face, Tiafimo Lopez, he stated that he would fight Devin Haney after he beat George Cambosis Jr. Well, George Cambosis Jr. was his IBF mandatory challenge that Tiafimo Lopez's promoter, legendary promoter, top ranked CEO and promoter Bob Arum, and ESPN, who promote Tiafimo Lopez didn't show much interest in negotiating that fight. And so we have Bob Arum who stated that Tiafimo Lopez did not have to fight his mandatory in George Cambosis Jr. He felt that George Cambosis Jr. and Tiafimo Lopez allegedly colluded together to not come to an agreement as the mandatory so it could go to a purse bid so they can have an outside entity bid on the fight, big money. And uh, that's exactly what took place because uh, Bob Arum, T top rank in ESPN, were not willing to put up big money for this fight. And so they knew if they went to a purse bid, there was an outside entity that would come in and put up big money. One being Devin Haney's co-promoter, and that's Matchroom, Matchroom CEO and promoter Eddie Hearn and DeZone, okay? And they did, okay? So they bid top rank in Bob Arum. Bob Arum stated that George Cambosis Jr. is not a big name. He's not a good fighter. And he stated that uh, George Cambosis Jr. would probably get knocked out in under three rounds. He's not a big name. He's not a big commodity. So they bid $2.3 million for the fight. But Matchroom, DeZone, and Eddie Hearn came in and bid $3.2 million. So they outbid them. But then Unforeseen, Trilla, a streaming app, uh, entertainment streaming app, came in and they bid a whopping $6 million and won the fight. Okay, But Trilla was unable to sustain the fight and uh, have the fight come to fruition as there was postponements, there was illnesses, there was a lot of things that took place. Uh, and so Trilla dropped the fight and it went to the next highest bidder, which was Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn Matchroom, and DeZone, okay? And so with that said, uh, they paid George Cambosis Jr. his biggest paycheck. So we know uh, Tia Fimo Lopez did not have to fight George Cambosis Jr. as the IBF, International Boxing Federation, and um, um, Peoples, they came out and they stated that they would have allowed Tiafimo Lopez to have a pardon and fight Devin Haney if that's the route he wanted to go. 
So when Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez came face to face at an event, uh, they went viral and they verbally agreed to make the fight happen, which George Cambosis Jr. responded to some comments made by Teofimo Lopez when he stated that Teofimo Lopez was using some uh, words that, you know, weren't uh, kind to a certain group. So with that said, uh, he stated to Devin Haney, don't worry, I'm going to fight you after I beat Teofimo Lopez. I'm going to give you the opportunity and we'll officially fight for Undisputed. He's even on record uh, doing an interview, not just his social media posts, saying the same things, uttering the same sentiments, okay? After he beat Teofimo Lopez via split decision, dropping Teofimo Lopez in the first round, facing adversity himself, being dropped in the 10th round, controlling the, the money rounds, the 11th and 12th round, and winning the fight, George Cambosis Jr., after the fight, he stated he knew he had to go through Devin Haney and be officially undisputed, but that temperature has since changed, okay? He's going cold on that notion, and uh, George Cambosis Jr. is now stating that he believes he's undisputed. He's actually changed all the titles on his social media to him being undisputed now, uh, which we know that's not true because history would recognize him as undisputed, and there's only one, uh, there's only six undisputed four belt holders in the history of the sport of boxing. So with that said, you know, um, uh, George Cambosis Jr., you know, uh, he started to initially say, it's not about money, it's about legacy and entertaining the fans and giving the biggest fight fans want to see and having a homecoming fight. The only thing, only stipulation he wanted was that he wanted the fight to take place in Australia, okay? And so uh, now you're having a lot of conflicts taking place with George Cambosis Jr. and his promoter, Lou DeBella. I personally interviewed George Cambosis Jr. myself, and I asked George Cambosis Jr. Uh, what, would, what would it take for you to fight Devin Haney? And he says all he wanted was Devin Haney to face him in Australia. He stated that uh, as long as he comes to Australia and makes the fight happen, we can make it happen, okay? So I personally asked George Cambosis Jr., you know, about the fight, and he said that for sure he wanted to fight the most entertaining fight and the uh, undisputed showdown with Devin Haney, okay? Uh, and he, again, he uh, reiterated it's not about money, it's about legacy. Well, then he then stated that uh, Devin Haney needs to sell his jewelry and his belongings to make sure he have enough money to pay the purse that he's looking for. So he's changed his mindset about that as well, okay? Uh, and so Devin Haney, he told him, I'll fight you on Jupiter if I have to, okay? So Devin Haney is taking the proper, the necessary uh actions to be able to fight in Australia as we know they have a stiff ban over in Australia and stiff rules due to the global pandemic. So with that said, uh, he stated that that George Cambosis Jr., he wants to fight in front of a 70,000 uh, seat fan arena, okay? Bring it back home, homecoming fight, okay? Uh, and so uh, George Cambosis Jr. is changing his mind. The temperature is changing every day and Lou DiBella, again, he never shown much interest. And now Lou DeBella, uh, he stated that they made Devin Haney an offer in which Devin Haney, uh, they could not come up with a number to satisfy Devin Haney. Okay, they could not find a number that would give Devin Haney what he was looking for that would make him happy. Uh, but yet, we found out that he never even made an offer. So now Lou DeBella is changing it and Lou DeBella is saying he didn't make an offer to Eddie Hearn. He made an offer to the zone. Okay, the people at the zone, the people over uh, uh, Eddie Hearn, he made an offer to them in which Eddie Hearn was uh, set to make a counter offer in which Lou DeBella is saying he made a counter offer, but it was absolutely egregious. Uh, it was, a, uh, um, you know, um, you know, it wasn't even acceptable. It was a, a joke. And so he says now uh, uh, he's heard the public comments by Eddie Hearn recently saying that uh, Eddie Hearn stated that they made um, uh, George Cambosis Jr. Lou DeBella you know, uh, another offer, okay, a counter offer, and now uh, Lou DeBella is saying that he doesn't even want to see the counter offer because as far as he's concerned, the negotiations, Devin Haney is off the table. He's not even an option, okay? So he said that he's tired of being nice. Uh, he's tired of pretending that he's happy and likes Eddie Hearn, and he stated that, you know, uh, Eddie Hearn, you know, uh, can go, uh, you know, you know the rest, okay? So with that said, he says he's tired of playing nice. He said, quoted, that uh, Eddie Hearn, you know, they're simply not, not friends. 
He's not he's not going to play nice with Eddie Hearn. And, uh, you know, uh, Eddie Hearn is simply just making up stories, uh, you know, uh, clear face is what he stated. OK, so with that said, you know, um, George Cambosis Jr. initially stated he understood that, you know, uh, he needed to beat Devin Haney to be undisputed. Uh, but again, that changed, you know, as World Boxing Council President Mauricio Suleiman and the board decided to confuse the fans and confuse the fighters and labeled uh, guys like George Cambosis Jr. undisputed when he's officially not undisputed and give them the mindset and the belief that they are undisputed when they're clearly not undisputed, okay? History doesn't recognize them as undisputed. So with that said, um, we know that, you know, uh, rising Mexican superstar title contender King Rod Ryan Garcia, he uh, let the world know that the zone had contacted him and Lou DiBella to have a fight after their interim fight. So George Cambosis Jr., as Lou DiBella stated, is going to fight in June in Australia. And now George, uh, Lou DiBella is also saying that, you know, uh, that he's saying, he's claiming now that Devin Haney, his father training manager, Bill Haney, who is the, you know, a CEO of DHP, Devin Haney Promotions, are not fully, uh, um, they have not fully taken the necessary uh, steps to be able to fight in Australia. Uh, and so that, you know, it's very stiff. It's very tough in Australia. There's a lot going on and uh, they will not be able to allow to fight there. And so Lou DeBella says he's tired of the saga. He's tired of going back and forth. And he just wants to let it know that Devin Haney is not on the table. He stated that, you know, um, so we know that Robert Garcia, former world champion, well-renowned trainer, he leaked it out that Lou DeBella accidentally called him and thought that, uh, he was Robert Diaz of Golden Boy Promotions, who promotes Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia stated that they had they shown and contact him that he will fight George Cambosis Jr. after an interim fight, and Lou DeBella uh, and Robert Garcia confirmed that when he stated that Lou DeBella accidentally called him with details of a fight with Ryan Garcia and George Cambosis Jr. and how to promote it, and he thought he was Robert Diaz of uh, Golden Boy Promotions until the second phone call he realized he was talking to the wrong person okay uh so with that said robert garcia stated that the details he was telling him included george cambosis jr versus ryan garcia after george cambosis jr's upcoming interim fight so with that said uh it looks like they're trying to box out devin Haney. okay from the very beginning regardless of what lou DeBella tells you from the very beginning after george cambosis before they even begun the negotiation before Devin Haney had his fight with a uh, former IBF super featherweight Mexican superstar champion uh, Joseph Jojo Diaz, December fourth, the following Saturday, after uh, George Cambosis Jr. fought against um, Teofimo Lopez, Lou DiBella did an interview before that. So before we even knew the outcome and the results of Devin Haney versus Joseph Diaz, Lou DiBella did an interview and he stated that he had no interest in fight, in negotiating with Devin Haney, okay? So it seems like now he's using every avenue possible to try to deflect and use Devin Haney and use Eddie Hearn as a reasoning for not wanting to negotiate, okay? So it's abundantly clear they have no interest in fighting um, Devin Haney, and it's very sad. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. Uh, Eddie Hearn, he stated that on record, you know, nobody has more contact and... Uh, better relationship with the zone than uh, himself and it's not true that Lou DiBella and uh, Ryan Garcia and George Cambosis Jr. stating that uh, the zone has no interest in putting up the money for the fight so let's see how this unfolds and plays out but that's all I got for y'all make sure you hit the like button drop a comment in the comment section let me know what y'all think y'all already know what it is it's your boy Blue Blue Blood Sports TV hate like comment and subscribe if you haven't subscribed Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shady videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.